you start an agency and it's unlimited podcast clip for podcast hosts, right? So find a tool like, like Swell does this as an example, where you upload an MP4 file and it generates like 50 plus clips based off of that source material. So it finds like viral moments in the in the episodes and then turns it into clips. Um, so you could use a tool like that and then you go and you reach out to podcasters and like their emails, you can most of the time find them publicly or you just find them on social media whether that's like twitter or instagram or linkedin whatever that is and direct message them email them and be like hey i like can i make you a bunch of podcast clips for free and percentage of those people will say yes they'll send you back a video and you make those clips and then you come back and say you know hey I, for uh you know five hundred dollars a month or a thousand dollars a month i'll do unlimited podcast clips for you so if they do four shows a month you're basically take you know making however many clips for them for all their social media and then an upsell that you could even do is like, oh, we'll schedule it out to your social media for you as well. And in the past, it's like, oh yeah, you'd have to have a video editor and like all of these like, you know, team members to basically like manage that. Maybe like an account representative, representative to talk to your, your customers. But that business easily could get to 10K a month in like 90 days. I guarantee it. There's millions of podcasts out there. I think it's 4.6 million. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of the Mindset Master Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Reed, and I'm also the proprietor of the podcast. Now, today we have a very special guest, and his name is Mr. Cody Snyder. Cody is an entrepreneur and digital marketer based in Denver, Colorado. For over a decade, he has helped multiple software and size startups, which means software as a service, and he focuses on marketing automation and content production tools. His background includes experience at both agencies and hyper-growth startups. Cody is now the founder of Swell AI and Draft Horse AI, a content platform that reeks $10,000 monthly recurring revenue in its first month based purely on virality. Now, I would like to welcome you, Cody, to the Mindset Master Podcast. Tony, thank you for having me, man. Super excited to be here. And you say you're having a good day so far? Yeah, no complaints. So excited to be on the show and hopefully, uh, yeah, pass on some learning so people can <laughs> dodge some bullets on their path to growing their businesses. See, that's one thing I wish that I had, Cody, when I first started my business was somebody or even like a group of people to kind of guide me through because, you know, when I was coming up in my business, it really wasn't a lot of podcasts. Like they, you, they, like they were out there, but they really wasn't like prominent like in today's time. Totally. Yeah. I think community is such an important thing. A lot of people go and they look for mentorship, but in reality, I think what's even more powerful is when you have people that are kind of at the same level that you are in the process of growing your business. Um, Cause you can tap into their learnings. Like, Hey, I'm having, you know, X, Y, Z experience right now. And these things are going on. Like have you done, you know, have you, how did you navigate that yourself if you did? And so having like 10 people, and this is something I do with like every company I'm starting is kind of find 10, you know, five to 10 different people that are all starting businesses kind of at that same point. And so as the company grows, you're like growing with them and it just turns into, you know, this network that you can tap into. And I, I found that to be way more valuable than just like a, some old head who's done this before you. Uh, those people that are, you know, in the, in the trenches as well can be a way more valuable asset from, a, uh, you know, just a, a shared learning. So with obviously different companies that you started and things like that. Now, I would like to know, where did it all begin? Like, take me back to like 10-year-old Cody. Like, were you always wanting to be an entrepreneur? Yeah, I, I don't know if I really wanted to be an entrepreneur. I just was kind of always selling stuff. For me, it was just like, yeah, there's a kind of a, a thrill of that process of like getting, you know, making things that people want and then getting them to buy it. For a lot of people, it, it can be either one of those things, but it, it was kind of the combination that was really uh, enticing to me. Um, so originally, started out i was doing graphic design and flipping like bootleg band t-shirts uh out of you know late high school ages and then in college kind of did the same thing that led me into uh what's called print on demand which is uh an awesome first business for people that are just starting out um basically what it is is partner with these suppliers that print items as they're ordered so this could be like t-shirts sweatshirts tote bags uh keychains <laughs> dog collars you know anything that you can imagine there's there's some type of manufacturer out there that will make it um as as they order it so that was really my like kind of first first big business that I created was in that space. It really kind of fits into that drop shipping category is what uh, I would call it. Great part about it is you can make money. The terrible part about it is the business has no value. And a lot of the times they can shutter really quickly because like the customer isn't bought into the brand. They're just like bought into the product, right? And those are two different things. Um, so kind of went through that whole process, learned that. And from there, I somehow ended up in uh, the uh, B2B marketing space. Um, I worked for an agency for a while that uh, really focused on 
helping like companies, uh, like we worked with mainly like Fortune 500 companies that were trying to transition into digital. And so my job there was do digital strategy for them. And I mean, these are guys that are like going from like, hey, we like buy ad magazines to, you know, how the hell do we even run a blog? So <laughs> kind of a, you know, very simple stuff that we were helping them with. It was, it's shocking that, that that was even like a role that I, I was working at. But I can say there though, like for people that are just getting started, this can be one of the most effective ways to really get an education is uh, working at these agencies that are interacting with multiple clients, um, like doing marketing for them. You just get a lot of at-bats, right? And so you get to see a lot of different businesses, how they function. And like, you're going to have a way kind of like faster learning process. Um, and just like those revolutions of learning uh, at these types of companies than you would if you were going into, you know, starting your own company and you just have that one growth line that you're going on. So long story short, uh, did some work in the e-com space uh, immediately after that. And then worked with creators at one point, like helping them basically sell their courses. So they uh, worked with, a, for example, he was like an Insta famous barber and uh, we helped him like sell basically like, here's how to structure your business so that you can start charging higher fees. And so I uh, was just like uh, an info product that we ended up selling and then down the line ended up in the, the BB SaaS world. Um, so software as a service. So we basically build tools that other businesses build themselves on top of um, to service their clients and customers. It's kind of a you know high level origin story, but I, I, to reiterate or answer your question, I think it was just one of those things where I was kind of always <laughs> hot on the trail for building something that people want to buy, which at its core, I think is actually like what a business is. I think about this a lot. Like what does it actually take to make a company? And it's the simplest version is like have something <laughs> that people want to buy and be able to sell. Like if you don't have both, you know, it's two sides of the same coin. If you don't have both of those things, like it's not a company, like people don't want to buy it, you don't have anything. And if you can't sell it, you don't have anything, even if you have the best product in the world. And so I, I think a lot of the times this gets overcomplicated and, you know, and not intentionally, like you have gurus or whatever that are doing these very complex analysis of business structure and all of this. And, and in reality, it's very simple. Find out what people want, <laughs> sell it to them. We actually have a lot in common because see, um, originally I came from a barbershop. So I'm from Tennessee and I cut hair for like 25 years. And then me and my Maybe. wife moved out to the West Coast. And then I was writing movies and that didn't last too long. So I started a few other like little odds and ends kind of jobs. And then me and Love my it. wife was like, you know what? Let's start a e-commerce store. Now, this is maybe like 2016. And it really wasn't a whole lot of knowledge or literature about e-commerce. So what we done was by me working at a barbershop, I'm used to having all these products at the at the salon. So we went into a hair care business and we started ordering all of these like bottles and stuff like that because I didn't know about like the print on demand and like the private labeling. I didn't know anything about that. And so we had all these products at the house and we just had like our whole garage was flooded with stuff. And we was like, how in the heck do we sell all of this stuff? Totally. So <laughs> these different agencies was calling me, Cody, and they was like, yeah, Tony Reed, man, give us $15,000 and we'll do a proper business analysis for you. So I'm like, okay, let's do it. So I gave them $15,000, Cody. And then they were just like, uh, Tony, go out and see what the people like. And I was like, I didn't have to pay $15,000 yeah, yeah, for that. Me, yeah, I it's did. crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. We'll resume the regularly scheduled program momentarily. Now, once you're on the inside of the Mindset Master Academy, the first thing that you will notice is going to be the layout. On the left, this is going to be all of the things that are going to be included inside of the Mindset Mastery Academy. We have videos for a positive mindset. We have motivational quotes. We have mindset and mental health. We have affirmation cards. We have digital planners. We have blogs. We have coupons and monthly deals. And we also have ebooks and audio books. And then you can easily download any of these right here. We have the Success Roadmap Digital Planner. And this is a 170 page digital planner. You can print this out and actually do it on old school pencil and paper. And if you have any issues, you can always reach out to me and my team directly at info at tonyreed.co. And another thing that we have monthly hot seats. Once you're inside the Mindset Mastery Academy, all of your personal problems become the group's problems. If you're going through a struggle in life, if you have a burden in life that you're going through and you can ask any kind of questions, anything that you want to know, the group is here to help. And I just wanted to quickly talk to you about this amazing opportunity to join the Mindset Mastery Academy. Now, back to your regular schedule program.
And I also I love, love um, how you help creators like sell their courses. Um, would you kind of get into that a, a wee bit, if you don't mind? Yeah, for sure. So uh, a lot of times, um, like you have these people that have a, a deep skill set, right? Like uh, whether that be like search engine optimization or Facebook ads or something like that. And so they create, uh, you know, YouTube tutorial videos or on a podcast or like have like an Instagram account or whatever that ends up being. And through that process, they develop this audience. And then, you know, they're basically trying to like make money off of that audience naturally as everybody is. Um, it's like the whole business behind this. And a lot of the times it's like, hey, I, I make the, I made this business. Let me show you how to make this business also. It's very lucrative. I'm just going to throw this out there to, the, to people. Doing a business that's courses about how to make a business will absolutely print money. Um, so like pick any space, like it could be Etsy as an example, like here's how to you know sell on Etsy and get your first thousand sales. Uh, basically to talk about the tactical components of like how we actually sold this. So they have these audiences and basically what we would do is create some type of lead magnet in the form of an educational piece of content. Um, this could be uh, like, you know, a, a seven to 10 minute video that is like some very specific thing about how to like increase prices as a barber, for example. Um, so we would have them basically like we have this piece of content that was uh, we call it email gated. So they would have to like provide an email to be able to see that. So as soon as they provided that email, they got access to that video. And then about an hour later, uh, we would start like an email uh, nurture uh, campaign to them. That was, again, just like educating them deeper and deeper and getting them farther and further down the funnel to be able to like buy the course. So that nurture campaign would typically happen over like a 10-day period. So every day we would send them an email that had some type of educational content, maybe a link out to a video that was like the same educational content, but in an audio form so that they could just like listen to somebody talking about it. And then, um, you know, through that process, uh, basically you're building trust with this person. Um, they already have this trust with you since you're kind of this influencer type, but written content is this really powerful way to build even deeper trust with people. So there's something about it, like the physicality of like written text that's in a long format, that's, you know, a thousand words, et cetera, that people believe in. And so then at the end of these, uh, you know, email change, we basically like provide an offer. So say the course was normally priced at like $5.99 for the, the course. Uh, we would say, you know, for a limited time, get access to the course for 50% off, right? So they can get it for $2.95 instead of that $5.99. Um, and then put some type of time constraint. So it creates this urgency to buy. And you know, from that, uh, basically build this, what's called the funnel to create um, sales of these info products. So that's like one side of it. The other side is then you can also take your audience and you can create like paid communities that are like mastermind groups to uh, sell like access to. So a lot of how people are doing this right now is with discords where they basically like sell access to this discord. And it's like all these other, I'm going to say, I'm just use barbers as the example again, like all these other barbers that are, uh, you know, gr trying to grow their business or like increase the amount of they can charge for their uh, like services. So all those people, you know, imagine you have a thousand people that are in this discord and they each pay you $10 a month, right? Like that's a 10, that's a $10,000 a month business. So that was another monetization strategy along with like the info product courses. And then the other things that uh, a lot of people do is like coaching where it's like one-on-one -on -one coaching where you can like, you know, you buy a package of four coaching sessions, maybe they're 30 minutes long, you sell that upfront, and then they can schedule those out anytime in the future. And you just have like a public calendar link that they only have access to that they can put time on. And you're basically like auditing their business with them, talking through how they can improve that type of thing. So that's kind of the the high level how I see a lot of these uh, course creators or info product sellers like doing this. A lot of it, uh, again, comes down to like, hey, figure out some type of... And indeed, like I'm talking about barbers, right? But like this same process can be used in any category, whether it's um, you know video editing, whether it's, you know again, like <laughs> Facebook ads management. Uh, social media management agencies, etc. Um, you can take that same idea and apply it to any of those categories. Where, but the biggest thing as like an individual is like, okay, find a skill set that's you know you can do online from anywhere, and that anybody could do online from anywhere. Get really good at it. Talk about how you're doing it in public, whether that's in the form of YouTube videos or you know IG Reels or TikTok, etc. And then um, again, like have some type of like funnel that you build that basically sells them into this high ticket item. Um, that's a that's a you know 
larger purchase price. And these courses don't have to be super long. Like you can do them. I've seen people do them for like like 10 hours of course content, but they're selling them again for $4.99 or whatever that number is. And when you think about like, oh, how many you know sales I need to do a month to basically say you're trying to hit that your target number of like 10 grand, um, like you'd only have to do like 20 sales, <laughs> right? So if you you know have 10,000 people that are like interacting with your content on a monthly basis, like doing 20 sales is really reasonable from a conversion rate standpoint of like, here's our top of funnel. Now we're going to work our way down. So yeah, but happy to dive deeper on any of that. But that's kind of how we I, we saw it work and, and be successful in the past. And I know, like I said, the listeners, they get like a whole lot of immense value from this right here. And I do want to ask you another question, though, kind of piggybacking off of that. Now, you had mentioned that uh, you had made $10,000 in your first month. Now, typically, it would take the average person, Cody, about, let's say, about five to six months to make you know, an, an income like that. But you did it in your first month. Like, how how was your mindset when you did that, Cody? Like, was you thinking like, man, I can do this? Or like, did it kind of just happen when you made that 10K that first month? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was definitely a viral moment, but there's a lot of things that led up to that, right? So like, I had been actively like posting on Twitter for like a year. And it was aggressively posting on Twitter, like 10 tweets a day for a year, right? And so there was kind of this culmination on that. I think the other wave that simultaneously, and this is for a company called Draft Horse AI. Draft Horse is a, uh, basically like you can bulk write SEO articles <laughs> in minutes. Um, mm-hmm. So you give it a list of, you know, you could upload a list of 100 target keywords that you're trying to write articles for. And five minutes later, they're written and you can publish them directly to your website, whether that's WordPress or um, you know, Squarespace, Wix, et cetera, whatever you're using for your hosting platform. We actually built it initially as a tool internally <laughs> for another company. And I uh, was talking about it in public. And so there was kind of this like pent up demand because I was talking about like, hey, here's how we're seeing um, what they're calling AI SEO, uh, like, like work. And why this is valuable to companies is when you write these articles, it can turn into inbound leads. So an example of this is, uh, say you do uh, like some type of fine art shipping, as an example, um, and you ship fine art, right? <laughs> Which is like this very niche thing. But if I can rank for every keyword related to that search, um, like all over the US, so fine art shipping Miami, fine art shipping Los Angeles, fine art shipping Boston, etc. Um, that turns into inbound traffic, uh, organic traffic from Google, and then that turns into leads for my company. And so basically, the tool we built was this like way for people to publish you know, thousands of articles all at once that would turn into more traffic for their website and, you know, thus turn into like more, more business for their, their brand. I think like for the growth of that company, like I just was talking and showing like how we're seeing this work and then people were asking for it. And like, this is the best type of business to start, right? Is like talk about things you're doing in public, uh, see what people are most receptive to and responsive to, and then build that product that they're basically asking for based off of that receptiveness. Um, which it's kind of backwards for a lot of first time founders to think about. Uh, I think a lot of people are like, I'm going to build this company and then force it on the world. And it's actually the opposite way around. That's the best way to build a business. It's like, what does the like market want? And then like, what, you know, where are the holes in the market or where's the that like the vacuums that aren't being filled? And then how do I go build a product or a service that is going to fill those holes? And typically people will pay you for that, that product or service that you create. So yeah, that was, that was really, I, I mean, it was kind of a why I, I just remember growing, like it, things aren't meant to grow that fast ever. So everything was breaking and on fire, but I think for a lot of you know founders as well they're looking for these like you know kind of these quick hits like this um i actually am like more the more uh like further along i get in my career i'm more obsessed with like hey i want to build something that like never goes down yeah. rather than something that goes up quickly because like in my experience the faster something to grow the faster it can fall as well um so how do you build like sustainable companies that are have compounding you know, over whatever that is and i and it, they can still be growing fast right like a great example of this is like if you have a company that's growing 10% compounding month over month, so you go from, you know, let's just say $1,000 in revenue to $1,100 in revenue per month. And then the next month after that, you go to uh, $1,210 in revenue. Over a 12-month period, your company 4Xs, right? So you go from January of that year at $1,000 a month. And in December of that year, you're at uh, $8,000 a month, right? Or sorry, $4,000 a month. So if you take that number and you scale it up and say you start at 10000 and you're growing compounding, month over month. In January, you're at 10,000. And at the end of the year, you're at 40,000, right? 
Um, so that's like, I mean, that's, that's crazy growth for a company to have, and that's still super fast, but 10% is kind of that sustainable number growing as quick as we did. It's like, every, again, you just, things blow up, right? So if you're ready to take your journey of mindset mastery to the next level and dive even deeper into mindfulness and also meditation, well, I've got a fantastic resource just for you. Inside, you're going to find step-by-step instructions, valuable insight, and also practical exercises to help you enhance your mindset and bring more positive changes to your life. This guide is the roadmap to success. To get your hands on this exclusive resource, click the link below in the description. That kind of same thing happened to me. When I first kind of got started, uh, and this is going back with the with the hair care thing, I, I tried to force my business onto the world. Then I realized that didn't work. Then me and my wife, we started setting like a different products like, you know, coffee and tea and stuff like that. But, you know, my audience didn't want that. And then I started doing like customer service. My audience didn't want that. Then I started doing like real estate because I sold a piece of commercial property to Oprah Winfrey and her family. And, yep. and, and I was like, man, I can show people how to do real estate because I have the knowledge. I'm not a real estate agent, but I have that knowledge because of just, you know, my mindset and how I was going into the deal. And then nobody was really paying me any attention. And it wasn't until one day, one customer had wrote me and was like, Tony, I like your real estate thing. You 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 have you know good mentalities and I like your course that you have. But this really isn't really wanted. What if you did like mindset? And I was like, mindset? You know what? That's what all of my courses are basically about is mindset. And I was like, let me come out with something mindset. And then Cody, as soon as I came out with the mindset, it was like, boom, overnight, you know, totally. 20,000. 20,000 subscribers, you know, got this Facebook group, totally. got this, got this, because that's what totally. they had wanted. The world had wanted that. And I was like, wow. So never again will I ever come up with something and try to just force it on the world. Just to piggyback off what you said, I think like a, a huge learning there for for people, like the key takeaway to me is like, it do things that aren't just one shot, right? Like it's like you, you can have multiple shots on net after that. So I think for a lot of first time entrepreneurs, they're like, oh, I'm going to you know, take this 10 grand and it's like all or nothing. And like, if this doesn't work, then, you know, they're on the street or, you know, they, they do this big gamble. What I would suggest just because I've done that as well. And it's the, you know, I, it's the wrong thing in my opinion, to, because again, if there, if it takes multiple iterations to find what the, the market is looking for, like that, what you just described, but like, Hey, I did all these different products, but then I ended up that actually like what people are most interested in. And in, as a product is this mindset course, if it takes multiple iterations to get there, then it's way more effective to how do I do small bets that try to validate this idea? And then if that one doesn't work, I move on, you know, if A doesn't work, I move on to B, if B doesn't work, I move on to C. And if you do that enough times, I guarantee you will find a company or a business that like people that will make money and that people want and like they want that product or service. Um, but a lot of the times like people do one or they do two, two, you know, uh, chances or they take one or two chances and that's, you know, they burn out or they don't have that immediate success. And so, um, I, you know, for anybody that's just like getting going or, you know, starting, uh, their, their, their like, journey in this, I, I would really emphasize like, make, make choices that are sustainable so that you can do this, <laughs> you know, have as many at bats as you can, you know, and, and for a lot of like, you know, and it, again, I'm, I've, I've been doing this for 15 plus years. Right. And like, it at least takes me 10 at bats to find a winning idea, right. Still at this, you know, with like this experience level. So I'm always just trying to like, how can I validate this idea as fast as possible? And like my metric of validation is like, can I get somebody to pay me for it <laughs> before I even build the product? Right. And if it's like, yes, you can. A lot of the times that's a really strong indicator that the market wants the thing that you're talking about building. And so then go build that thing once like they've shown that they'll pay you until that point. It, a lot of the times doesn't make sense. Like something else I noticed, a lot of times whenever you're kind of putting stuff out to the world that the world wants, sometimes I notice you'll kind of have naysayers. And this kind of happened in my life. Like when I was putting the word out there about the world I wanted was mindset for me, I started telling my support system, like my, my family and stuff, and people was like, oh man, nah, that's kind of silly right there. Nah, I, don't, I don't think nobody want mindset. You know, go back to doing hair. People want hair. People, people want coffee. People want this. Yes, people might want that, but people may not want that from me. And I had to understand that, Cody, because they was trying to tell me to go one direction. And typically you want to like listen to your family and your social totally. circle. And so if your social circle is kind of pushing you a certain way and you're trying to go this way, please remain strong. Like don't divert from what you want to do because of the audience. All the money, man. If people are paying you and other people are saying that this is the wrong thing, like you just found 
a massive opportunity. Right? So, yes. I mean, you, your story is a perfect example of that. Hundred percent. Yeah, everything you said. And <laughs> I'm, you know, <laughs> stamp of. I. That's exact exactly the way that I would approach it. Um, are you working on any kind of like projects right now, kind of that you would mind talking about, Cody? Anything? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're building these companies, but um, what I'm really excited about are these businesses that are powered by these new AI tools. Um, so like traditionally, when you ran an agency, uh, you would it's like the challenge is getting good people and then building processes out for them to do the work. You know, with these new AI tools, you can build these workflows to basically do those exact same processes without the people. <laughs> and so that's like a pretty magic thing. So like a great example of this is like, for example, uh, you could do podcasts as an example. Um, so you maybe you, know, you start an agency and it's unlimited podcast clips for podcast hosts, right? So um, the process to like go about doing this would be like find a tool like like Swell does this as an example, where you upload an MP4 file and it generates like, you know, 50 plus clips based off of that source material. So it finds like viral moments in the in the episodes and then turns it into clips. Um, so you could use a tool like that. And then you go and you reach out to podcasters and like their email Emails, you can most of the time find them publicly, like what, whether it's like an admin at or like, you know, the podcast host's name, um, or you just find them on social media, whether that's like Twitter or Instagram or LinkedIn, whatever that is, and direct message them, email them and be like, hey, I like, can I make you a bunch of podcast clips for free? And, you know, percentage of those people will say yes, they'll send you back a video and you make those clips and then you come back and say, you know, hey, I, for uh, you know $500 a month or $1,000 a month, I'll do unlimited podcast clips for you. Um, so if they do four shows a month, you're basically take, you know, making whatever, however many clips for them for all their social media. And then an upsell that you could even do is like, oh, we'll schedule it out to your social media for you as well. So you're taking off like these, like uh, this process that they were doing traditionally and putting this price on it. And in the past, it's like, oh, yeah, you'd have to have a video editor and like all of these like, you know, team members to basically like manage that. And then also like maybe like an account representative representative to talk to your, your customers. But like that business easily could get to 10K a month in like 90 days. I guarantee it. There's millions of podcasts out there. I think there's 4.6 million. Like you could, there's more than enough that you could reach out to and, and find like the, you know, customers. Um, and I'm seeing other companies do this where they uh, go and they enter, like my friend's starting this company right now where he goes and he interviews uh, business owners and he does like a leading interview where they like ask questions that like lead them to create viral moments. They record that interview and then they chop that up into clips. <laughs> and then those clips, uh, they schedule to their social media channels, you know, across LinkedIn and Twitter and everywhere else. They're trying to grow their personal brand. Um, this is great for anybody that's selling info products as well. Like this is like a company that would service them. And and he's charging five grand a month to do this. It's him and you know a couple like virtual assistants that are helping him, and then all the tools that they're using are these kind of AI tools to power it. And I mean, he's got seven customers in the first sixty days of it being live. <laughs> it's huge business, right? Like that's thirty five k a month that he's just spun up in the last sixty uh, last sixty days. And so I think that there's these massive opportunities for that um, to for, you know for people to to go out. And these are the, the the things that I'm excited about. And I wish I had more time to go start because they're just they're great cash flow businesses. You know, for my mindset with this AI stuff is like, hey, take your workflow or your process that used to exist and like what portion of that process can we automate, right? So that we don't have to like it does like try to get the AI to do the heavy lifting. Um, I think for a lot of people, they're like, oh, this is gonna replace me, or I'm gonna try to replace this entirely. And in reality, it's like, no, this is actually just like another tool within our tool belt, just like iMovie, just like one of these other, you know, <laughs> softwares or whatever it is that we're using um, that we deploy like at certain moments in time. So I, I I think the other thing that like a lot of people get hung up on with this AI stuff is they're like just using the AI for its general knowledge. And that's all right, but what is actually the magic of the AI is when you have it like write about something that you provide as the source material. So as an example, like you take the transcript of this conversation that we're having and you say, hey, AI, like here's this transcript. I want you to write a blog post article that's based off of this transcript. And it's going to do an incredible job at that that's in 10 seconds, right? And so I, I, I think like thinking about it in that way of like, how do I provide boundaries for it to write about an idea and provide that source material that then it goes and it, rather than... Because because in just a shine light on this, like how most of these AIs were trained is off of like the general knowledge of the internet. And when you think about the internet, there's a lot of terrible stuff out there um, that's like not good. And it's training off of that as well, right? So it's like, it's going to be a very average writer is the idea. But what we found is when you provide that source material, that 
creates a boundary for it to talk about these ideas from, it's going to produce outputs that, you know, you're going it, to, it's going to look and feel like you're a top 10% thought leader within that space because you are, right? Because you have this knowledge that is basically being captured, captured in this audio or video file um, or in these other blog posts that you've written, you know, that you spent a lot of time crafting. So anyways, just a, you know, my call to action for people to how to think about it and how to use it within their businesses and their workflow. You know, for the people that are out there that are right, right now, they're scared about being feeling replaced. Like what I would say to those people is that like, if you start to use AI to like do your work, like your output is going to be, you know, if you're, say you're a 10 X marketer, right? Like you're suddenly a hundred X marketer when you like augment yourself by AI. So like when you have all this knowledge and you basically use AI to accomplish, you know, whatever those jobs to be done are, um, you're going to be able to just, yeah, I mean, you're going to, your peers are going to you know, catapult yourself above them. Right. And I think that that is the opportunity right now. Like for these people that adopt this early and get used to it, um, I think this, these tools are going to be built into everything. Like in the future, like every word processor is going to have them, right? Like every, <laughs> like X, yeah, you know, Excel is going to have them. Like every spreadsheet is going to have them. Every social media like scheduling tool is going to have them. Like these, they're going to be just like a natural part of like our workflows. I think uh, for the people that you know, start to adopt this early, even in small doses, right? Where it's like, oh, I'm just using them for specific tasks. But what I would tell people is like, hey, like take the things that you hate doing most and try to figure out like what part, like what percentages of those can I automate away using some type of AI tool? And you're just going to find like quality of life wise and also like just the ability to produce outputs scale that uh, that make your business grow, whatever that is, are going to be way higher than not using those things. So, you know, and there's, there's a, you know, a bunch of deeper stuff there too, like where you you can like train it so that it sounds like you and it has your tone style and voice and like all of these things but um that's like what's on the horizon with this and like we're, we're talking with um like especially business coaches like they're this is something they want to do where they're like hey i have 500 episodes i want to write a book about xyz topic uh, can you help us like assist us on that process like this is where um like not like you know especially nonfiction writing is going to go when you like as a journalist like what's their job right they, they go out they interview people other books that are related to their topics and then they like write based off of all that information so what's going to happen is people are going to be basically like collect all that they're going to curate it and then they're going to take that curated content and then they're going to repurpose it or transform it into a new media which is you know books which isn't the course or whatever that ends up being so that's a uh, something that's like scary and also exciting <laughs> at the same yes time, yes so. I, I wish i had ai when i was writing movie scripts cody because my first movie script that i wrote it was 250 pages that was like going with the wind so a movie script is supposed to be 90 pages and that's an hour and a half i would sit back you know click clacking all these words and stuff like that man but if i would have had AI, I could have had a movie script wrote in like two days versus eight totally. months like it used to take me. Totally. So, yeah. Totally. I mean, I think the ideas will see, still be the most valuable piece, right? Like if yes. anybody can use these AI tools, um, like original ideas are still going to be the most valuable. It's just, again, using this tool within your tool set to accomplish that out, outcome. But if you just say, hey, AI, like write it, you know, if, as the movie, like you, to use the movie script example, like write a movie script, like it's going to be okay. It's not going to be yeah. awesome. <laughs> and maybe you uh, record like your ideas about the movie script for like 10 hours of, you know, like video content, right? And then you use that transcription of what you just described. And then you're like, hey, AI, write a movie script based off of this idea, you know, all these transcripts that I just provided you, you know, that's this original idea. It's going to write a really interesting, like first draft of that thing. Right. So, um, yeah, I think that's like, again, how I'm personally thinking about it more and more is like, how do I take experts knowledge and then have the AI do this very like tedious thing based off of those experts knowledge, which again, is like how journalists, how, you know, authors have written books for forever. We're not doing anything new or different. We're just Mm using different tools to to do that thing faster. Now, my next question to you, Cody, now, how can the listeners of the Mindset Master Podcast, how can they learn more about Cody? They're like, oh, man, I'm, I'm really resonating with Cody. I want to try his software. How can they reach out to you? Pretty active on LinkedIn and Twitter. Those are kind of the two places um, that I'm cataloging, like all the stuff that we're learning and doing. Um, and then the companies that we're building are Swell AI and then Draft Force AI. Like, honestly, I've, I've gone on a bunch of shows that are like this, talking about these ideas and different different forms in different ways. If you just go on like Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts or you know, whatever podcasting app you use and search my name, there'll <laughs> there'll be other episodes that are talking through even, you know, like different details of these these topics and ideas. Um that that'll probably be an effective way as well um to kind of 
just get more information of uh like this same uh you know same type of thread um but yeah there those are that that'll be the best ways to get in touch with me if, if people are trying to so and what i do i also uh, link all of your um, notes in like the description below what is one piece of advice that you can give to your younger self in today's time that you would go back and do differently yeah i think my piece of advice would be do things more like i think i tried to build really big companies to begin with and it would have been better to just build like a smaller like tool company that did just like a specific thing really well um so uh, an example of this would be like you just do like we just do video editing rather than oh i'm going to try to do all the different types of digital marketing for all these different types of clients i think that uh that's like and this can be applied to any business just like pick one thing that people want do it really well and you're going to get cash flow and also experience and knowledge that you're capable of parlaying into the next venture. And then like every venture, you know, they kind of stack on each other and they can get more complicated and more complex and more sophisticated. And like typically with that as well comes more money because they're like harder things to do. But yeah, I, I think that that's one one key thing. And then the other thing, like I, when you asked me this question, you know, when I was just starting out, I, I wouldn't have answered it this way. I would have said, um, like, don't go work for somebody else. Just, you know, <laughs> get the scars on your back yourself and, you know, just, you know, it, trial by error, trial by fire, whatever that you want to call it. I actually don't believe that's the right way anymore. I think it would be go find like somebody that has done something that you want to do and be like, Hey, I want to work for you. Like, how do I work for you? I will work in for you in any capacity and work for them for like two years and download all of their knowledge about the world that you can honestly, like get paid to work on their dollar. And you're going to come out of that with just like a skill set and a knowledge base. And like, for me personally, like just to make that more concrete of like what I, I did that I thought looking back was luckily it happened. <laughs> um, but I, I went and worked for this guy who was running a marketing agency. And I got to see like firsthand, like, here's how you operate a business. That's like, and so now, you know, the world, my world blows up and say, everything goes to zero. Like tomorrow, I can always go back to that skill set and can get a company up and running, you know, really quickly and really easily. And also like that knowledge, I, you know, I took, he had a 40 year plus career. I took his 40 year plus career. And now I've downloaded as much as I can from that knowledge, from all of his experiences, and I can parlay them into now my ventures. And I, I couldn't have got, you know, done, you know, done all this as fast as I, I, I did without those types of things. Um, but again, I, I think, uh, doing these oh, oh, and, and it's almost like apprenticeships, right? Like, and it's what's wild is they have these in like trade schools. Like if you become an electrician or a plumber, right? Like you go and you do actual work with people that have done this work for a long time and you learn from them. I would do that same thing, but just in, uh, uh, like whatever the category is that you're interested in, whether that be you know selling info products or you know doing some type of, uh, of a digital service company or, you know, whether it's, uh, like e-commerce, whatever that ends up being. Is find somebody that's doing the thing you're doing, convince them to let them work you like to hire you, work with them for two years. And then at that, at the end of that point, you're gonna have most of the time if you like hustle and like really want this, like you're gonna have enough knowledge to be able to go do this yourself. Great piece of advice. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today, Cody. We really appreciate your time and all of the wisdom and your knowledge that you've imparted upon us today, sir. And until next time, I'll catch you later.